Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. Any questions before we continue going over new things? <coughs> any questions? Okay, so last time we were talking about um, equivalent functions. So here's the definition here. So two functions. F and G are R equivalent <coughs> when two requirements the domain of F is the same as the domain of G and 2 F of X is G of X for all X in the domain Okay, so let's see. How about uh, these two functions? f of x is 3x squared plus 5, and g of x is 3x squared plus 5 on, um, say, 5 to 15. So here's two functions. And my question to you is, are f and g equivalent? So are they equivalent? No, they're not. So let, let's think about this here for a minute. So what if, you, what if you plug 10 into F? What would you get if you plug 10 into F? 305, right? Because that would be 10 squared is 100 times 3 is 300 plus 5 is 305. What if you plug 10 into G? So can, if you plug 10 into G, you will also get 305. Mm -hmm. What if you plug 11 into F? Well, that'd be 121 times 3 is 363 plus 5 is 368. So if you plug in 11 to F, you get 368. If you plug 11 into G, you get 368. So are these functions equivalent? So, so the answer is a resounding no, not at all. Not at all are these functions equivalent. So why not? Domain. domain. So what's the domain of F? All reals. All reals. Because remember that the standing rule is that for a function defined by an expression, if the domain is not explicitly specified, then the domain is understood to be the natural domain of the expression which defines it. So the domain of f, because the natural domain of this, 3x squared plus 5, is all reals, f's domain is all reals. What's g's domain? 5 to 15. So are these two domains the same? They're not. So the answer to the question is no, they're not equivalent. Okay, any question about this one? Okay. 
How about how about this f and g? So f of x is 1, and g of x is x divided by x. So are these equivalent? So are they? No. They're not. G has a domain because x equals zero. But you can't have x. Right. So, so neither domain was explicitly specified, so f's domain is its natural domain, and g's domain is its natural domain. What is f's domain? No, that, so what could you plug in? Anything, right? So the domain of f is negative infinity to infinity. Okay. What is the domain of G? Mm -hmm. Are these the same? No. They're not the same. So are F and G equivalent? No. They are not. If we were to plot F and G, F looks like this. So what would the plot of f of x is 1 look like? <coughs> so it would be a horizontal line. Right? It would have y value 1 for every x value. So this is the plot of f. So there's a picture of f. What would g look like? So the output, say, when x is 10, well, what's 10 over 10? 1. How about 10 million? What's 10 million over 10 million? OK, what about on the other side, like negative billion divided by negative billion? 1. But what notable, what notable difference is there? That's 0. At 0, there's a big hole there. So now I have a question. Ignore all the stuff that I said for the last three minutes. Here's two pictures. Are they the same picture? No. These pictures being a different picture is, is just the visual way to, it's just me asking, are these two functions the same function? No, these pictures aren't the same picture. This one has got a big old hole in it. Not the same. Are these, are these functions the same? No, their domains differ. Okay, good. Any question about this? Okay. <clears throat> How about How about So so far So far, these, this question is, is just an exact duplicate of the previous one. So now I'm going to change it. Are these functions equivalent? Yes. Yes, they are equivalent. Why are they equivalent? Because, because in the first place, do they have the same domain? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I wrote the same thing twice. So they have the same domain. And furthermore, x divided by x, if x could be anything at all, it, it would not be legitimate to cancel this. Because canceling it would be like would would be an an admission an admission and assertion that x could never be zero. So how about on our domain? Can x be zero on our domain? No, we're saying that we're between ten and twenty. So in fact, 
these, these two expressions are equivalent, these expressions are equivalent on the domain in question. So are, so are these two functions equivalent? Yes. And the reason why is because uh, another way to understand the reason why is to say the following, <coughs> that So if this is 10 and this is 20, when we draw f, f will look like this. That's f. And then we draw g, g will look like this. So aside from color, are those the same picture? Yes. yes. They are the same. So these things are equivalent. Now, these expressions aren't the same. Right? The way they do it, you know, you can imagine putting putting these things in a box. And you don't know what's in the box. Is it an F or is it a G? Okay? And the reason why they're equivalent is because you would not be able to detect the difference if they were in the box. If you put, it, if you put any x into the f box, a 1 would come out. Any x that's between 10 and 20. And if you put any x in the g box, a 1 would come out. You could not tell the difference. you have a question? Uh, that's really dumb, but like, how are you going to plug anything in with f if there's no x? Well, it's just... <clears throat> it's just a function that always gives you the same value. Okay. So, so you could you could imagine like, you know, like a, is vending machines usually, you, you know, you can see it and then you put in your money and then you press the buttons and then you watch it go. F is like a vending machine where every single thing is a bottle of water. Okay. <laughs> you press E three, out comes a bottle bottle of water. You, you press F10, water. <coughs> Other questions? <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, now let's start dealing with these a little bit. So here's, a, here's a, an example function. So f of x is 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. And I want you to do the following. So I want you to evaluate and simplify as much as possible this. So I'm going to do something slightly wrong. Okay. What's not right about this? Okay. So let's look at just this, this bit for a minute. First off, doesn't that look weird? Okay, in the first place. So, how about this, just this bit that we can see. What's being squared currently? A. 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 Is the 2 being squared? No. No, it is not. As, it's, as it is presently written, as it is presently written, 2 is not being squared. Why, why is that the case? Well, so what, what, you're, what you're telling me is that if I was to put 2a in parentheses, then the 2 would be squared. But I, what I'm asking is a different question. There are no parentheses. Why is, I mean, there, there's two things that are occurring here. 
The fact that 2 and a are side by side means that they are to be multiplied. The fact that this 2, this two right here is in superscript position means that this thing is to be squared. Yeah, the order of operation says that this exponentiation comes before this multiplication. So mm -hmm. only the a is being squared. Only the a is being squared. But that's not what the formula says. The formula says that whatever you give to f, you gotta square it. So we gave 2a to f, which means 2a needs to be squared. And so y'all have been saying the right thing to do the whole time, you parenthesize. Okay. So every time you substitute one expression into another, you need to parenthesize it. Okay. So then let's multiply this out and collect and everything. So then, what would the, when we're finished with this with this term, what would the coefficient be? Twelve a squared. Twelve a squared. All right, so good. Twelve and then a squared, and then minus eight a and then plus five. Any question about this one? Okay, so then now please do this. Um, F of negative four C. Sorry? <coughs> no. Okay, so in the interest of time, this would be 3, and then negative 4c, square that, minus 4, times negative 4c, and then add 5. So any question about substituting those things in? Okay, now that they're substituted in, let's carry out as many operations as we can. So for this, when you're finished with this term, what will its coefficient be? Good, so it'll be 48 and then c squared. And then plus 16 c and then plus 5. Any question about this? <coughs> okay, how about f of y cubed? So again, it's just kind of the same thing over and over again. So 3 and then y cubed is substituted in, parenthesized, squared minus 4 y cubed plus 5. Okay, so then how can we, so 5 is just 5. This can be simplified by not, by just removing the parentheses because they don't do anything. And then how about this? Like the power yeah. multiply. multiply, right? So when exponents are iterated, you multiply. So this would be 3y to 6 minus 4y to 3 plus 5. Any question about this one? Okay. How about f of... Um, <coughs> M plus
Okay, well, this would be three, and then I'm, I'm going to try something here. So it'll be, uh, well, that'd be, I think, m squared, and then plus three, and then minus four m plus three, and then plus five, like that. Is that how that works? So do I have it right? No. No, this is a catastrophe is what this is. So this is wrong in a lot of ways. So no. So in particular, what what's something that's in particular wrong with this? Well, for one thing it would be if you didn't destroy the whole thing. Four M minus twelve. Right. Okay. So I think what you're saying is that it would it would it would have been better if I had done minus four m minus twelve. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to write it like this: minus four, and then in parentheses m plus three, and then plus five. So that's better. That's better. It's not big, but it's better. Okay. What's what's not right about this? Right. So does everyone see that no, this is not right? So how do we fix it? You, both, you have two m plus threes in so you foil it. So I agree, but even even before any of that, I'll just say this. It's just like all of the ones above. You just parenthesize everything that you substitute in. So it's going to look like this. So it'll, that's what it'll look like. And then what do you put in those parentheses? M plus 3. That's what goes in there. OK, so this is the first line that's right. This one was not right. This one was not right. This one is right. OK, so then now. I want you to multiply and collect. So 3 and then what? So I'm going to write something. This would be this would be m squared plus 9, right? And then minus 4m and then minus 12 and then minus 5. Right? No. Well, I did m plus 3 squared, so that's m squared plus 3 squared. Exactly. So, so to do this, square a binomial, you could use FOIL, right? So you'd get m times m plus 3 times 3 plus 3 times m plus m times 3. So those, those cross terms, the thing that's missing right here, that's the O and the I in FOIL. So what goes here is plus twice the product of these, so plus 6m. Is there any question about getting here? Where did the, why did the 5 turn negative? Uh, that's, that's just a... <laughs> <laughs> I was so busy making purposeful errors that I went ahead and Accident. made an accidental one, too. <clears throat> okay, so then let's multiply this out and collect. Uh, okay, so this would be 3m squared, and then this would be 18m minus 4m would be 14m, and then 27 minus 12 is 15 plus 5 is 20. <coughs> Any question about this? Okay. So, we'll continue with this one. Oh, not that. So this is a continuation. So five, I'll recopy that F. 
the f that we're dealing with is 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. Okay. Okay. So now, here's a weird one. So this one's a little weird because in comparison to the previous requests, the first request was, is, okay, I want you to replace all the x's with 2a. All right. And then the next request was, I want you to replace all the x's with negative 4c. And then we made a few different requests. This request is a little bit weird because now the thing I want you to replace an x with also has an x in it. So that's a little weird, but that's okay. You can do that. So, what would this be? 3 so 3 and then x plus h, parenthesized, squared, minus 4, and then x plus h, and then plus 5. Is there any question why this is the case? Okay, now let's collect. So then what is x plus h squared? All squared. X squared plus 2xh plus, plus, plus h squared. These terms in the middle, these are the o and the i in FOIL. Okay, then minus 4x minus 4h plus 5. And then now we can finish it out. So that'd be what? 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 4x minus 4h plus 5. Any question about that? <coughs> Okay, how about this one? f of x plus h minus f of x. And yeah, please, please do use the thing above. Yes? Yes, f of x plus h, and then minus f of x. <laughs> okay, well, we, we know what f of x plus h is, that's this. And we know what f of x is, that's this. So it's that one minus that one, right? Mm -hmm. All of these minus all of those. Okay, well I'm gonna write something. So 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 4x minus 4h plus 5, so that's f of x plus h and then minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. So do I have it right? This is not right. What's not right about this? Why is this not right? Look, it said f of x plus h, so I wrote f of x plus h. And it said minus, so I wrote minus. And then it said f of x, so I wrote f of x. 
But this is an expression. This thing is an expression, and I was substituting pieces into it. Every time you substitute a, something into another expression, what do you do with the thing substituted in? You parenthesize it. So now consider this expression. These red parentheses. And, ima and imagine it before those red parentheses were there. So adding or removing those parentheses, does that change, does that change the result? It doesn't. These red parentheses have no effect. Okay? That's this. Now, if I call this the green bits, right? This is, this is red things minus green things. Presently, what's written is that we're saying, is that this is saying subtract all of the green stuff from the red stuff. Presently, what's written is that we're just subtracting the first term and then we're adding the others. So I'll, add, I'll place these parentheses. So does, does placing these parentheses make a difference? Yes, it does. Because, right, because currently, this is saying subtract five. Subtract five. But before those green parentheses were there, we were adding five. Okay. So then let's carry this out. The x squareds cancel, the, f the negative 4x's cancel, the 5's cancel. So 6xh plus 3h squared minus 4h. Any question about uh, this example? So now, what I'd like to stress is the following. On, on essentially every single one of these six things, I took the time to say, is this right? And the answer was always no. And then I said, why not? And the what was always the answer? You didn't put the parentheses. <laughs> it's the answer every time. When you substitute things in, parenthesize what's being substituted in, and you will be right every time. But here's the problem. Here's the problem uh, with my admonition to always parenthesize things. So is anybody... Uh, familiar with the psychological experiment called a Skinner box. You might have heard of it. Okay. So here's something that's, that's interesting, is that if you take a rat and you put it in a box and you put a button in that box such that every time the rat pushes the button it's given a food item, then that rat will figure that out in the first place because rats are pretty clever. And then it will press that button to get a food item until it's full and then it'll stop. And every time it's hungry, it'll just go to the thing and press the button and, and get full. Now, if you, change the if you change the device, if you change the device to where when you push the button only some of the time and, only, and randomly in a non-predictable way to the rat, only some of the time does a food item appear, then that rat will gorge itself to the point of obesity because it'll push the button, and if a food pellet comes out, it'll eat it, and if not, it'll just continue pressing it until it comes out. That's an interesting experiment. And that's exactly what's happening here. Because if you don't put the parentheses, sometimes it works, like these red ones. But the rest of the time, it doesn't. And so students think, well, if it works this time, I just wanna, I just, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna risk it, that's it. Writing these two marks is too much work. I'm not gonna do it. Okay, so please don't fall prey to that voice in your head that says, no, nah, I'm just going to try and get away with it. Because when it comes, when it comes down, <laughs> I'm not calling you a rat. <laughs> when it comes right down to it, what I'm telling you is that when you substitute things in, if you parenthesize it, you will always be correct. And some of the time, you can just remove those parentheses. Good. Any questions about this? Yes? Um, why doesn't the You, you can, but the, the reason, I mean, you conceivably could. There'd be no, no problem with that. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, when we talk about polynomials when there's just one symbol, like just an X or just a Y or whatever, then we have this definite order. But when there's, when there's two symbols, then the order depends on things. At any rate, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into it. And, and it it's not, won't be graded. 
But if you're just worried, well, is could there be one? There is one. There is a right or there, a right order can be defined. But it's just it's not part of our class. Other questions? Okay. <clears throat> now. So here's an example. If I give you this function, f of x is x squared minus 4. So f of x is x squared minus 4. I want you to make a table of values. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what do you suppose I mean by this prompt? For every one of these x's that I gave you, I want you to plug that in and tell me what, what you get. So what do you get if you plug in negative 4? 12. 12. All right, because negative 4 squared is positive 16, minus 4 is 12. Okay, so let's do the rest of them real quick. Uh, that'd be 9 minus 4, 5. That'd be 4 minus 4 is 0. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. This would be negative 4. <coughs> and then... The rest are easy because it's negative 3, 0, 5, 12. So I'd like, to, I'd like for you to observe these red numbers. They read the same going forward as going backward. That's not always going to happen, but that does happen in this case. Such a thing is called an anagram, when it's a word anyway. Does anyone know? I'm not sure if this is true, but I th I've been told that what is the longest anagram in the English language? That's a, that's a word, a single word. Race car. <laughs> Race car. The letters are the same forward and backwards. Can you believe that? <laughs> Race car. Okay, so, <clears throat> so now let's plot. Y is f of x. So what does the table have to do with my request to plot? So this, this constitutes a point, negative 4, 12. Well, high, how, if I take these to be integer coordinates, 1, 2, 3, then how high can I plot? Up, well, up to 5, right? I can't do any higher. So I can't really plot the first one and the last one because they're too high. So let's plot the rest of them. So here's a point. Negative, when x is negative 3, the, the y value, the output, is 5. So negative 3, 5. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So that's one of the points. Okay, so that's that one. And let's plot the next one. So negative two, zero. Yeah. And then negative one, negative three. And then 0, negative 4. Okay, so any question about plotting these four points so far? Now, here's the visual manifestation of the fact that this is an anagram. Okay, now that point has its counterpart, this point has its counterpart, 
and this point has its counterpart. So can you see that they reflect back and forth to each other? So this reads the same forwards and backwards, and this is the visual manifestation of that, this symmetry. So we plotted seven points just then. If I was to s say, well, I want you to plot seven million points, and you plotted a whole, you calculated a bunch of them and did all that, then it would, what you would see is this. Interesting. Any question about this? <coughs> okay. So here's a separate matter. So this is okay? Here's a separate matter. I gave you a function on that, on that exercise. I said, here's a function. I want you to plot some stuff. And now I'm going to ask it, I'm going to raise a different question. What if I provide for you a plot and then I ask, is this, is this plot the plot of a function? Right. So this is a proposition. So when does a, when does a plot represent a function. And not a relation. Generally. So every function is a relation. But not every relation is a function. So what I want you to, what I want to address in this proposition is that supposing we have a plot, how do you tell that it is the plot of a function? So what is the distinction between a function and a relation? What's the distinction? That was the first thing we talked about last time. What it is, is that if you consider a, a function to be a machine, then for every valid input, there must be exactly one output. Okay? Exactly one output. So a relation conceivably could have more than one output. That would be like, so like um, a vending machine that's working properly is a function. Because you, you, you put in your money, and then out comes exactly one item. Okay? A vending machine is supposed to work like a function. But a broken vending machine could be something like, well, you put in your money and then out comes, you know, some of the time one item, some of the time lots of items. That's not a function. It's broken now. Okay? Okay. So when does a plot represent the plot of a function? So the idea and the distinguish... To, to distinguish these is a function uh, has at most one output for every for every input. Whereas a relation has one or more. Okay. So, so this is idea one. And idea two is that x's are inputs. Those are the things you put in to 
functions and relations, and y's are outputs. So for example, let's make a drawing. There's a nice, a nice drawing there. Okay, so this, every every such drawing like this is a relation. So all of them are relations. So what is the domain of this relation? What how, what's the conceptual device you use to determine the domain of a relation that's drawn for you? The sweeping thing, right? So the conceptual device is that you imagine, okay, well. Let's put a line over here, and the question is, is does, does this vertical line touch the drawing? So is this x value over here in the relation? No. No, right? How about this one right here? Is this one in the relation? No. No, right? My porridge is too cold. My porridge is too hot, right? This, kind of, this is just right. OK, so these, these are the ones in the relation. OK, so this is the domain. <coughs> So let's consider this particular x value. So there's an x value. How many times does this x value, um, how many outputs does this x value have? One. And how can you see that? Because it's got this one intersection right there, right? Okay, so as long as I stay really close to here and I wiggle this vertical line around, there's always going to be one if I just am, am really close to here and just wiggle just a little bit. But now anywhere in the domain, is there always going to be one? No. no, right? Because if I move, say, over here, then do you observe that there's two? Mm -hmm. So this would, and, and in other places, there'd be even more. Okay, so then for this x input, there's one output. But for this x input, there's two y outputs. Okay, so my question to you is, is that this is, every such drawing is a relation. Is this relation a function? No, this is not a function. Because here's an example x that has two outputs. An example input that has two outputs. So this is not a function. OK, let's make a different drawing. <clears throat> so this, too, is a relation. Okay, But my question to you is still the same. Is this relation a function? So let's, let's think about it for a minute. So again, right, my porridge is too cold. This, this is not in the domain. This is not in the domain. This is in the domain. So let's, let's draw a particular x that's in the domain. So how can you see that this x is definitely in the domain? It crosses, it, it crosses at least once. Now I want you to imagine that I can move this vertical line anywhere. And as I'm moving it, you would see the green intersection moving around also, just like we were doing over here. Will there always be one? Yes. So what's the answer about this? Is this one a function? Yes. So apparently, if I was to draw a relation for you, you could, you could take an imaginary vertical line and move it around and see how many intersections there were. And you could use that 
to determine if this relation is a function. So I guess this constitutes a test. So what do you think we should call this? How about the vertical line test? See you on Friday. <laughs> <laughs>